would love to see you guys join us if you've got the chance. I am going to do my best, along with some of the other coaches that we have within men, women of iron, freedom, and, and teachers and educators of the, the what we call the freedom formula process, if you will. We're going to be joining you on Fridays. I'm going to try to keep it as consistent as I can. Around this time works great for me, which is why I'm starting episode number one with it. If it sounds like I'm out of breath, <coughs> I just finished working out. I'm just throwing a shirt on. <laughs> I'm just catching my breath. So speaking of <laughs> catching their breath, here's what I want to talk about today. And this is just going to be an open uh, forum. So if anybody does want to drop questions, comments, etc., please do. And I'll try to do my best. Today what I want to do is I want to begin a, a conversation about stress and how stress which comes in a myriad of different forms, uh, such as anxiety, fear, panic, overwhelm, a sense of loss, of traction, depression, all these different things are all forms of stress. And I want to discuss a little bit about why self-regulation alone. So meditation, medication, exercise, sedation, etc. It, it's not enough to deal with our stress. So some of us, we each kind of, I think we each, or I want you to consider anyway that we each have our own sort of vice as far as how we deal with our stress. I used to be all kinds of drugs and alcohol. I used to be over-exercising, um, sedation of a million different ways. Some people do uh, prescription medication. Some people have gone into meditation. I've, I've done it all. The problem is, is it keeps bringing me back to the root cause of it. And so after years of studying this, I've learned from some of the best in, the, in, in, in psychology and personal growth, and I've just watched and started to look at the types of questions that they ask to help them come from a stressful story or situation and reframe it into such a way that it can be useful in a positive direction. And then we can take that, 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 that information about what's, what's really triggering up inside of us that is usually a disconnection of ourself. Most of this, the, most of our stress actually comes from us, our little inner soul inside of us disconnecting from our own values and our own mission that we know intuitively inside of us is what is is what we're here for. And the further we disconnect, the more more um, sensory sort of emotion that we express. And what happens is we start to disconnect. Okay, self regulation can bring us back a little bit. Um, but asking the right questions can help us to reframe, realign back in with us, and then take action aligned with, uh, with our inner soul. Okay. But here's what happens. I have a tendency. I think most of us have a tendency to just, when we feel an emotion, hell, who the hell wants to feel pain? Not very many people. We want to just, we want to like get it away or we want to run away from our week and then just sedate all weekend. Man, that's been a pattern of mine. Um, let's see, what are some of the other ways? Um, over exercising, I did triathlon during some of my most stressful times in my life. Um, particularly Tracy was pregnant with number one and number two. I was doing 12 hours of triathlon a week. You don't think I was running away from stress? <laughs> that was one of my forms of, of what I thought was constructive self-regulation in a way that brought me, um, endorphin. Um, dopamine and a form of relaxation and probably was more constructive than other forms but the same way I was just running away from all my stress okay and ultimately this brings it brings us back to the discussion if you're feeling any of these emotions and we're if you find that you're on a bit of a roller coaster um, in life highs lows highs lows and they're high and deep ultimately this is the the basics behind how our brain chemistry works where we're, most of us are cho we're, we're chasing after about four or five different neurochemicals. Dopamine is that, that little accomplishment. Every time you accomplish something, you see that you, you, somebody has liked something. We get dopamine on a regular basis, and that stimulates us. But when we don't get the accomplishment or we don't get the like, we actually go through a withdrawal of dopamine. Same thing with endorphin and exercise. You ever go three days without exercising, you start to just you start to get lazy and we, 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 we feel worse and we feel like a puddle. 
Same thing with uh, serotonin, the feel-good hormone of, of actually at, like doing something in a productive way that's selfless, for example, is a great way of, of boosting your serotonin. But if you're not able right now during COVID, a lot of people feel like they're, they're either out of work or they're not able to do the things that they feel are productive. So serotonin is dropping. You wonder why mental illness is going up right now. Um, oxytocin. Well, oxytocin comes from really strong um, um, engagement. I mean, sex is a big ru rush of oxytocin, um, but really good friendships, that, that en enmeshed conversation that you have where you just don't feel like you can dis disconnect from a, from a conversation, oxytocin is boosted. All of these different things are being regulated mostly on a regular basis in a really balanced lifestyle. But for, the, for those of us, particularly now, but in general, when each of these things isn't being regulated or boosted consciously, what happens is if they drop, we physically experience a withdrawal. And so most of us go into sedation or we go into immediate gratification. How many of you find that that sounds familiar? Certainly has been me for, for a long time. So I, my form of uh, sedation was mainly um, exercise and I've since learned uh, meditation. And all of these things are good because what I want you to remember is this. <clears throat> if you're triggered, triggered, like pissed off, irritated, frustrated, resentful, if you're kind of emotionally charged in any way, shape, or, or form, the sympathetic nervous system is taking over and it actually shuts down 50% of the brain that's actually utilized in intellectual, creative, productive thought, and you go strictly into just survive the moment it's almost impossible for you to be able to use that part of the brain that we need to be productive. So what's the first step when you realize that you're there? The first step is self-regulation, right? Um, the reality of it is, is that if, if we don't have the ability to first self-regulate, meditate, exercise, scream, yell, get it out, whatever that is, we can't use the part of the brain that's going to come up in the next part, the, the questions that I want you to consider in what I call the Patriot Missile Game. Others out there from John Martini, Nima Romani, uh, Byron Katie, Garrett J. White, they've all come up with their own processes, and I'm not going to suggest for a second that I'm a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a counselor. I'm just a chiropractor that loves personal growth, and this is just, these are the questions that I've found when I've been coaching myself and others for that matter, when I've been leading, these are the questions that have had the, the most consistent, significant impact. So I want you to consider them after you've self-regulated, when you're in a stressful situation, that could be any one of those emotions. And remember, anxiety, fear, panic, overwhelm, or just a sense of being a kind of losing traction. It could almost be boredom. These are all triggers that we experience. I want you to consider these questions. And I'll lay them out for you, and I've even got a PDF and other things that will come with this if you just want an answer. But they're also all found in my app. So if you don't have the app yet, then I want you to, um, I, I want you to ask me. I'll help you with that. Um, there's uh, I'll, I'll, one way or another. I will help you to get these questions, whether it's through the PDF or through the app, okay? So where do we start with this? Let me see if I can come up with well first and foremost just really quickly let's bring it all back into perspective why am i even here so ultimately uh if i had to confess my wife would say this is about 10 years but over the last three or four years i've really lived my life in survival mode uh, i've had a lot of repressed anger uh, frustration resentment there's been um i've found uh i mean ultimately i've lived in survival mode and I've, uh, uh, I had to figure, I knew that it wasn't working for me and I needed to figure it a different way out, which is why I've come along this process. And I've done it all, like I said, but what I needed to do is I needed to figure out, well, how the heck do I get myself out of these little micro depressions that were coming, these frustrations, because all the stories and all the tools that I already had were just keeping me there. So after living in survival mode, basically utilizing 50% of my productive brain for years, what finally hit for me was that my neck blew up. 
Um, Tracy and I were, str were struggling at home with our, with our communication. Um, that, that, that was frustrating for both of us. It wasn't a he's wrong, she's wrong type thing. It was just we, we were both living in survival mode and incapable of really dealing with what was going on inside of us. So it came out with both of us. I don't know how many of you have gone through situations where the relationship feels really difficult, but we don't know why. You, you, you Literally, you can't come in, but what you do instead is you blame. It becomes really easy to start to blame and resent and then look for your to get your values met in other areas. It's what happens, okay? So not, not only did my neck blow up, I lost 60% of the function of my right arm. Um, Trace and I were struggling with our communication. I was having difficulty in my own office, just staying focused and on point. Um, and more than anything else, I was living kind of angry on the inside. I do a very good job, I think, and kind of hiding that. But for the most part, that's where I was living. So I'm going to give you a suggestion. Um, when I go through today's example, I'm going to use a completely different, um, like just a day-to-day -day trigger so you can see how to utilize the process as I go through, okay? So let me bring up, I'm going to see if I can share this with you. Do -do -do. Where's my process here? I'm gonna do just a second here to share my screen. What I wanna share is not up there. What I wanna share is this. This is what I wanna share. Right there, okay. So here are the stream of questions that I want you to consider, okay? I call it the Patriot Missile Mind Game. It is, for those of you that have followed through or those of you that are using it, yes, I recognize. It is a kind of a masculine approach. There are other uh, names that people have given their own work, such as Byron Katie's The Work, The Quantum Collapse Process, The Overview Experience. There's softer ways. For me, the Patriot Missile Mind Game came from these little daggers that kept getting thrown into my head these these emotions essentially and for me what what occurred to me was that if i had these little missiles that would be shot up and blow these little triggers up before they actually reach their destination then i could actually stay focused and that's where the name came from okay um here are the questions um and here's the process for the for those of you that are following uh, first and foremost, you cannot really dive deeply into this. You can do it superficially without getting anything if you are triggered currently and unregulated. So go and release the rage. Go uh, meditate, run, do whatever you need to do. Or you, I'll show you this maybe next week, how you can do this as a positive gratitude version. Today we're going to do it as a triggered version. Okay. Now, I call this the incoming Scud missile. In my case, the example that I want to use today is I've had a, um, one of my old leases, my lease company on my car. It is now billed me. They've billed me twice now. After, two months after I've gotten rid of the vehicle, they're still dinging me. 500 bucks, 500 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is. Okay? And it's really starting, it's actually irritating me. It's actually pissing me off. So. What is the emotional trigger today? Well, it happens to be the overbilling, unnecessary billing. They haven't stopped billing me. So the next question is, this person or experience is making me feel what? Can you guess? <laughs> Just a little bit irritated, maybe frustrated, uh, maybe even pissed off. Okay? Does it feel positive or negative? What do you think? Negative. Okay, and you know, if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, it's probably hitting about an 8.7 right now. I, in fact, I can feel the heat coming out underneath my shirt because I have to get on this and it's pissing me off. So what is the story that I'm telling myself about the situation? Question number four, this is my story. I feel like um, this company is being irresponsible. Uh, they're not, um, they're not, not acting in integrity. They're so irresponsible. 
not in integrity, um, and uh, they need to shut this thing off. Okay, is number question number five is the story about someone else? Where do I do the same thing? Wow. So, where am I irresponsible and lack integrity? Man, I could give you a list right now of things. So, irresponsible. Um, well, we left our kids at home all day long for 12 hours. I didn't check in on them once. I kind of left that for Tracy. Ugh, ouch. Um, out of integrity. Huh? Well, sometimes I have a couple of drinks on Saturday nights. That may or may not be out of integrity. The list goes on. Okay. So what's the, is there a story? Is there another story that I can tell? Well, I'm irresponsible and I act out of integrity. Okay. The, the, it's actually true. Okay. Number six, um, if I feel that something else should have occurred, Considering, consider the following fears and delusions and create a what should have occurred story. So if we look through the fears, I'm afraid of what others will think, I'm not smart, what if I fail, I don't have enough, blah, 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 over here. Oh, they should be more considerate of me. Wow. Okay. They should consider my pocketbook right? They should prioritize me, my values, and get their shit straight as far as I'm concerned, right? So my story is that really they should be taking care of me, okay? That's another story that I'm telling myself, okay? And I will look for evidence to support that. In fact, it's, it's all still in my own victim-y part of the brain. So I'm going to look for evidence and I'm going to ask people and get people to jump on my bandwagon to support these stories because th these are pretty self-evident stories, okay? Now, if you're in a triggered standpoint, I want you to actually go through this exercise in its entirety. For right now, I'm going to go through it on speed dial so that you get the point. Now, again, we're doing a negative, negative missile game. If you're doing a positive one where you had a great day, great experience, etc., that's where the positive part is going to come in. So if we're going through a negative one, something that's triggered you, something that's irritated you, etc., I actually want you to go through the closing of your eyes. And when you do the breathing, actually do the breathing. Big breath in through your nose and release through your mouth. Okay. Actually release the exhale. Okay. And then what I want you to do is I want you to feel that emotion that you declared. So I declared that I was pretty frustrated. So I want you, when you go through your own process, to feel that frustration. And then I want you to ask yourself, where else in your life have you experienced a frustration like this? And the further we go backwards in life, we start to, we start to undo little pieces of the onion and we start, we start to peel them away and all the little stories that we're actually still feeding in our life. So for me, when was, the, when was the first story that I can remember where I was really, really frustrated? Well, in debate class when I was about 10, I couldn't argue my side of the story. Funny enough, the, the argument was that um, I was arguing that, that yellow cars were easier to, to keep clean than, than darker cars, but I couldn't articulate it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I had no ground to stand on and I got absolutely murdered. Well, follow me for a second, okay? Um, so what happened, I was 10, couldn't articulate my, my, my view, my point. And in my own words, what is the opposite emotion of frustrated? I would say maybe supported. So where did I experience the opposite supported at the same time? Through all my sports. I, I excelled in all my sports. I was, or in my sports, I was supported everywhere. Uh, what would have been the drawbacks of the debate class not happening? I wouldn't be doing this right now. I wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't have spent the time, energy, and money to be able to articulate this. This uh, the psychology behind what happens inside of our brain. Um, next question: um, uh, Where where are you experiencing or, or creating the 
the uh, creating support right now, well, I can give you a ton of them. All my coaching, patients, um, leading, house, all over the place. It's really important when you do this exercise that you really go through and get at least five out because otherwise the brain is going to stay attached to evidence that supports. I'm going to move this so I'm actually looking at you guys. Evidence that supports your other stories. Okay, what I want you to do with this is I actually need you to sit down and this is the hardest part of the game is you need to look for evidence to support the opposite emotions because ultimately what happens is when you have a negative experience, all you can see is negative. Our brain shuts off. We can't see that everything is balanced. This is a, a huge piece of quantum physics and human behavioral psychology. Our brain latches on and attaches. Okay, so I want you just to look at the, the exercise and look for the opposite emotion that's there and it is always there, but you gotta dig through it, okay? So seeing, do I see why and what, uh, what uh, today's uh, initial trigger, how it's benefiting me? Okay, so ultimately, I'm being frustrated because I can't articulate to the, the car company that they need to shut off my freaking uh, payments that I no longer am responsible for. Well, ultimately, whose job is it to be able to articulate to them that this needs to be shut off or go take care of business? It's my job. It's my responsibility. The benefit of me when I was young was that I've learned how to public speak, to communicate. But at the same time, I didn't want, I just wanted to blame this company for what, what it is that they're doing. I recognize full well that when I go take care of business, I get what I want. Do you see where I'm going with this particular trigger? Okay, so let's continue on. Now it's time to realign, okay? The next questions are really important. If you are unclear as to what your top three to five core values in your mission statement are, I want you to consider in the Freedom Formula Group doing day through the module of day three in the freedom seven day freedom formula challenge it walks you through how to get clear on this because it's difficult to do the next part unless you have clarity on that i'm going to explain me but don't realign with me realign with you that's the point of the exercise okay so the top my top three to five values are adventure accomplishment inclusion and edge Okay, and my mission statement is to develop and deliver extraordinary life strategy for successful business parents. That's lots of you, and some of you it's not. Don't worry, it's, that's, that's, I'm just describing who I am. Successful business parents in the midlife triangle of chaos. Triangle of chaos, marriage, some form of work or business, and kids. Okay, those are the three things that the vast majority of us are starting to experience, if not fully experienced, if not moving on even past. So develop and deliver extraordinary life strategy for successful business parents in the midlife triangle of chaos that are experiencing fear, anxiety, um, panic, overwhelm, or just a loss of traction in business and life, but are wanting to invest their time, energy, and money on thriving at their highest level, okay? So if I take my four, values and my mission statement and i look at creating a new story around these payments with the car well if if my mission is to develop and create strategies for those of us that are in emotional states but want to thrive well i could look at this as though at the at the uh vehicle situation as though i would like to be more responsible for where my money management is occurring. And in fact, that lies in a deep root inside of me. Okay, that is my fourth story. So to review, let's go down. My original trigger story was what? This car company is pissing me off, frustrating, frustrating me. They're irresponsible and they're out of integrity. Story number two is, I'm doing that all over the place as well. I am irresponsible and out of integrity. Story number three is, they should get their shit together. Take care of me. They should have my values 
at the forefront. Otherwise, I'm going to resent them and bitch about them. The aligned story is I develop and deliver extraordinary life strategy for successful business parents worldwide in the midlife triangle of chaos who are experiencing anxiety, burnout, panic, fear, overwhelm, um, or just a loss of traction in business and life and who are wanting to invest their time, energy, and money on thriving at their highest level. And I, as a leader, need to be on top of my money management. Of those four stories, I get to choose which one to invest time and energy in. I'm gonna choose the last one. I'm gonna choose the one that's aligned with me. So now, if I fast forward a year from now, next question, number four down here. If I fast forward a year, what would I love to create regarding today's trigger? So regarding um, people and companies being able to take money out of my account um, without my will, guess what? What I wanna create is a strict protocol to who and how money is withdrawn from my account and I wanna be in control of that, okay? So what am I noticing about all of this? What am I noticing? I started this exercise angry and frustrated at something outside of me. What I'm looking at is this is a gift to Ryan Doyle to get my shit straight and to be in control. So what I was doing is I was projecting my own frustration at myself and my irresponsibility with my money and I was projecting it somewhere else. Does this make sense to you? I want you to run through this on your own. This is powerful stuff. Now, in the app, when you go through this process, it will give you a summary of these things. What are your values? What is your mission statement? What is the chosen story about your trigger? Your lesson, what you wanna create? The one action step you're gonna take? What's my one action step that I'm gonna take? Well, I'm gonna be calling these guys very shortly and I'm gonna make sure that they stop taking money out of my account and or I am gonna go put a freeze on my account and make sure no more money can be taken, taken out of that account from this company. Can I do that today? You're darn straight I am, okay? Now, the end part of this is I wanna make sure that you are either reflecting on your daily engine and what you're in control of in your core four or what I call my engine, my daily engine, or your crib, you're doing this exercise first thing in the morning like I like to, I like to structure and create my core four so that I'm committed to it. And again, core four are the, the things we're doing for our body, exercise, grains, spine, nervous system, exercises, treatments, etc. For our soul, meditation, um, um, we can do journaling, podcasting. For me, a lot of my soul and being work is coaching, aligned project work. Relationships. Day with self, partner, kids, connection with, uh, with others, or just notes to anybody who would benefit from, from kind of being just seen by you today. Um, and make sure, if you're considering doing things, make sure that you're aligning with, if you know people well, with their love languages. Tracy will, will change, change me on this, but one of her love languages is acts of service. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do in the morning, I've just made a habit out of it. It's not for her, it's just something to, for me to acknowledge her, is I try to get up in the morning and I try to get the kitchen squared away. I get the dishes done, I get the countertops cleaned away. It's just, even just that is not me leaving a mess for her. If she's getting up later with the kids, if I'm leaving early, that's just me acknowledging, hey, I see you. Little things like that are, are important when you understand people's love languages, okay? Business, learn, study, do the Patriot Missile Game. These are all parts, part and parcel in these. Write it out and it will provide a summary for you. Guys, I am having you consider that doing this exercise is no different than exercising your body, exercising your relationship, okay? If you're not working up here on a daily basis, then what happens is it's no different than your fitness. If you don't, if you don't exercise for three or four months, it, it's deleterious to your health. It's amazing what stories we actually don't realize we're investing energy in, and they grow and they build into dis-ease, into cancers, into stress, in 
into all kinds of different manifestations. I want you to consider that we're not just working on our body. We're not just working on our business. We're also working on our relationships and inside of here. Guys, I hope this has been beneficial. Let me know if you've got any questions about this or if you need any access to the modules and the coaching and or the app so that you can utilize these tools on a daily basis. Thanks, guys. This is Coach's Corner, Dr. Ryan P. Doyle, and I'm out.